Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. On the bench today we have one of these. This is a um, hood. So that's someone Lindsay Hood. I can't remember the first name. If I remember it, I'll put it in there. And uh, this is a circuit that's been chopped and chained and modified. And there's all sorts of people been working on this. And there's forums out there that you can go and look at to get suggestions and ideas and about this, this is the uh, uh, single rail, so it's just a positive and negative uh, input AC. A lot of the other ones, uh, there's been some conversion to dual rail, so we've got a positive and then virtual ground and a negative. This is not one of those. This is bought off AliExpress, and um, it's actually bought as a pre-built. I thought it was going to be a kit. Uh, I didn't read it properly, but it's a it's a pre-built, and oh, that's fine. It's a Class A amplifier, so um, it's going to be pretty intense on the current. But uh, it's it's got its uh, place in history, and it's I thought it would be a worthwhile um, kit to take a look at. So I've already got mine over here on the bench. Oh, let's just quick, quick, quick. Let's just have a look on the um, on the website. You just see what it says on the screen here. So on the screen we have it here in its, all its glory. There's a few changes, past is different colour, same sort of thing though. Oh, that's uh, the one I've got on my board is a three, three, 300 and this is a 6800. So there's a difference there. Um, the Nichicon, according to the one that I've got on mine. Now this is two boards, just to put them together if I just do this to the one board like this. Um, and we can see the see this uh, 202 right next to this. Uh, it does talk about this. I'm sure it says something about LM18, uh, LM317. Yeah, I don't know why it says that because there's not an LM317 on here. That's actually a tip 41, tip 41C to be exact. That's a tip 41. But see this uh, behind it because you'd be looking this way because this is your input, this is your output for your speaker. And on the other side of this tank capacitor is the um, the AC input, and this here, this uh, 2K202, this is to adjust the quiescent current. They suggest run about 1.2, run about 1.2 amps. Some suggest a little bit higher, 1.4. And this is a uh, 204, I believe, and that is for adjusting the voltage. And you do that by putting the um, positive side of your probe, your multimeter probe here, and you can go onto the ground I think this one's ground here and this one's ground here. And you can just see what the voltage is there. I'm putting in 24 volts. With mine, I've set mine to be 12 volts. If you do 18 volts in, you know, 9 volts and and so on and so forth. So, yeah, so that's what it is. And there's a little bit down here that just tells you how to do that. And it does say here, the voltage range 12 watt AC to 28 volts. AC 2 wire, so that's single rail, 50 watt or more. Um, but I'm going to tell you now that these uh, heat sinks get incredibly warm. I mean, incredibly warm because uh, mine's set up for about 1.2 uh, amps. And we're going to take a peek at that actually because I think this is quite dependent on temperature as well. The way this is set up, it's all quite close. And these are not the greatest of potentiometers. You can be twiddling it, it's going down, and it starts going up as you're still going down. You're supposed to be going down, but it starts going up again. You've got to find that little area where you can get it to stabilize out. I suggest maybe you get some better ones, Borns or Vichy or something like that, and put them in there. And uh, the voltage not so bad, but on the current, it does uh, it does play around a little bit. So on the screen here again, it says they're uh, using the the five two hundred high position high current regulator for the output. I beyond the three one seven. I don't know what that is. Even more inaudible. Using the thumb film audio capacitor, the sound is better because they've got this big old weamer here for the input capacitor. Um, Toshiba, big tube. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Look at that. But this is the bit, the debugging method. So 969 commission divided in the static. Yeah, yeah. One, the quiescent current has to be adjusted to home, has been adjusted to home default 1.2 amp. Mine wasn't like that. You can change your quiescent current by adjusting the 202 adjustable resistance on the board. It's the one I pointed out to you and recommended 1.2 amp. In addition, the quiescent current needs to be tested in series for the current input port. So, 
what we're doing that there is we're taking our output here so this has got two 12 volt outputs and i've just connected the two middles so we've got a, um, a, a 24 volt because it's connected in series i run the one side in the return side here on the negative and i've got my plus side coming out here going into my multimeter over here and i try fact to be just this a little bit better Going into my multimeter at the back here, and of course it comes out and does the return and feeds into this side of the AC input. And we can turn that on now actually, because in a moment we're going to be we're going to be um, switching that on. All right, can I see that? Is that going to be there uh, good enough? The reason why I got this piece of white paper there is because there's a lot of reflection off this. Um... Yep, you can see that off the uh, oscilloscope screen. And it's annoying. Oh, uh, where's my twiddly stick? <laughs> right. What else? So, yes, uh, there's our, that's for our current side of things. And then we got the uh, two, the midpoint voltage test, the midpoint volt voltage needs to be one half of the power supply. As I explained, 18 volt, 9 volt. Me, I'm using 24 volts, so mine would be, um, mine would be 12 volts. Line test can be, so just a resistor. So yeah, you're gonna put the um, positive probe to the output here, which is there on, on this bit here. Let me just look on the other side of that, just make sure I'm not doing that wrong. Nope, uh, the positive probe can go here, which on the, let me just show you. On there, you see it there, it's got a little positive. See that there? A positive bit there. And then we can just go onto the ground uh, part there. And that we will be able to see our voltage. Now, just this is, um, wow, we're seven minutes in. I'm sorry about this. But this is um, something, well, something I just wanted to see. I've got this set up here now, and it's running in the background. And this is just, you know, what it's like as the. The system is sat here and it's all connected up and I want to put the power on and I just want to see you see this is my 50 Hertz all right we're gonna get some 50 Hertz noise around here I can't really help it this is my 50 Hertz and I just want to see now this is uh, just in case you wondered this is down at minus 180 here and this 160 line minus 160 is where we got our uh, noise sort of level at the moment and I just want to see uh, if there's a great deal of change as this warms up. It's going to take a few minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down uh, this uh, connector block and then I'm just going to let it warm up. I'm going to give it a few minutes to warm up. Right now I'd like to be able to have a temperature probe. In actual fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. Um, I was going to use that to show the voltage. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to stick a te temperature probe in here. Because we can do that on here. Let me have a look. Yes, we can. So here we go. I've just sat this temperature probe. Let me put that there. And if I can put that there, can you see that? Without too much reflection. You can you see that? Yeah, I should think it would be good. Yep. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... That's just me. There's no way I'm... Well, isn't that bizarre? There's no way I'm 31C. Absolutely no way. I mean, that makes me incredibly... So I'm just going to... There's a little tiny hole at the back here in this heat sink, and I'm just going to wiggle it and see if I can get my... Do you know, darn it, I'm just going to put it in between the, 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 the grooves of the heat sink. So you can see that that is now... Um, Give it us an indication, it's not the most precise. Uh, this one's better, but we need it for the current indication on the temperature. And um, now I'm gonna turn the darn thing on and we can have a little look at the temperature. But the main thing I want to be looking at is what's going on at the screen. So I may just, you know, I'll bring the temperature into a top left hand corner of the screen somewhere. So here we go then. Let's uh, put this down and hopefully uh, my cats haven't been doing anything too crazy on here since I set this up. It isn't going to go bang. If it does, we get to catch it on camera. Okay. So on the screen, look, we can see there as that's kicking in. And you can also see the current 
being drawn which is over one amp at the moment but you can see on the screen here look at all these like these are all multiples of this 50 hertz hum so we've gone up from the 160 line that we were resting on and that was below the 120 I believe I can't remember you have to think but so we've gone up like uh, 20 dB and though all these are multiple so I've got a funny feeling we're gonna hear some audible hum and I will connect it up to a speaker just so we can have a little listen at that and you can see the temperature we're up to 20.8 C 20.9 and it's gonna take a little while it's gonna take a few minutes so I'm gonna shut up now and I will just uh, speed this up in the actual editing Let's have a look. So uh, yeah, well, well, you know, it's been on for a few minutes now. Um, pretty sure you can see a little blue light, a little blue LED on in the background there. Not quite sure what that's for. Maybe just to let you know it's on. We can see the temperature, 38.2 C, and at the moment it's got to this sort of area with its warmth. Uh, Leaving that on, it's going to, as you can see, it's going up a little bit, going down a little bit. But that could be because, you know, I've had the front door open, I've been sat outside with my cats. And, um, but the temperature thing there, that's an interesting thing, because at 38.9C, soon we're going to be on 40C, we have a, a, um, a degradation of those performance of those transistors and the higher that temperature goes the more degradation we have <laughs> i find that word hard to say um of those transistors but yeah, i don't think we should be that too worried about it but after 25c which is what they normally set the they give you the um stats but running it at 25c that's what you're gonna get um, yeah, the outside of these is sort of quite cool. These are, yeah, I mean, it's it's not that bad actually. It's warm. It's not uh, too hot to keep my fingers on at this minute in time, as we can see. By this, I think that's still getting up slowly. It goes down a bit, and then it goes back up a little bit and down a bit. But that could be because of the ambient. Uh, thing going on, or it could be just because, like I said, about the um, the uh, um, pot here isn't isn't very very good. Isn't very good. So right, what we're going to do then is now we've got it like this. Now we said a we're going to have a little look at the total harmonic distortion and the total harmonic distortion noise. As I pointed out before, this here this these are all multiples on hundred. 150, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, let's round about 500, I don't know what this is doing there, what's, uh, but on these lines you can see where you'd be going from 2, 250 to 3, if we follow the lines here, and it looks like it goes all the way through, so I've got a funny feeling when we put a, we got to stick a speaker on to see if we can hear any hum, I expect a bit of hum, but we'll see what we get, so let's start turning the volume up. See our signal going in, we got a bit of a spur on the 2k there. Let's go straight to 15. Now, these particular amplifiers are, this, this is not full blast listening amplifier. Okay, I mean, it would be great for it to be like that, wouldn't it? But it sort of emphasized that these are, you know, sources. Um, 
You know, you've got to use your common sense with this sort of stuff. You, you can't expect this stuff to have been tweaked that well um, to give it right maximum full range. And as we can see here, 15.5 uh, dBFS, um, which is not better than 20, but it's uh, 0 0.094. Right, and as we go to about 10, I'd say 10 is going to be the sort of area that you're going to be listening to it if you're listening to it. Uh, we can already see this um, distortion right here. Look, it isn't very good at all. It isn't very good. I'd bring that back down to there, let's say there. Let's get it down to the 0.1%. All right, let's just say there. So I reckon you're going to be listening to add that. That's, that's uh, 42. I don't know what I should probably try and do is just do the input voltage of my input signal and then um, the output voltage signal and then we can do a divide on that to see what the gain is I need another meter give me here we go I'll use this little dinky dinky Bryman I think this came free with the um Yeah, I think this came free with the um, power supply, the Rigel. So where can I put that so we can see what's going on with this? Can I just balance that there, can I? Uh, right, so let's have a look at our input voltage. Don't... Yeah, that's my cat. The, just the 0.377. Probably do it so you can see that. I know people prefer to get to see things rather than. I oh, know I do. Let's do it again. See, 0.377. You can see that down there. Just I know it's not that easy, but we just have to live with that. And then we're going to go in and we're going to have a look at the output on there. Shouldn't really matter about me turning it around. No, we can see a uh, 4.41. No, I don't have a calculator. I can actually do, so I'm gonna put that up on the screen, what that is. The uh that so what we are now we're on 44, it seems to be stabilizing out there. And I've got a funny feeling we can turn up that quiescent current just a little bit, and I don't think it's gonna Give us much more in the way. Let's just have a little quick look again at what we're on 42, 13.2, uh, we're on 1.5, and that's at the volume 42 here. It's just a quick way of me trying to work out what's what. No worries, me little twiddler. I lost me twiddly. All right, we'll have to go in with a screwdriver, and um, hopefully, I won't touch this when I'm touching that. This is why I like me little twiddly. Oh, drops on the floor because it's got a, like a you know sheath around the little thing inside. It does want to want to open on the other end, but I prefer to use this. So I'm just going to use that, and we're going to turn up that quiescent current. I'll give that a few twirls. So got part twelve. But this I had it dead on uh, the other day. I, I know, it's, uh, I see some recommends, you know, or 14, they say 1.2, others say 1.4, so I'm just gonna leave it there. 1, 2.6. Now what we had was volume 42, and we also had 0 0.15 and we're on 13.2 so now we've got 0 0.11 all right so a little bit higher on the old quiescent current it does give us a little bit better there but of course our heat has gone up to 46.5 so let's just bring that down again and let's have a look at the on a forum i saw it i can't remember exactly what it was what i'll do is when i got the laptop on i will put it up in the editing well, the forum is, so you can have a look for yourself. It's not exactly the same because there's been a lot of changes made with this circuit. 
people working on it. So 1.37, who cares now? As you can see here, look, we're on the 47.2C. But let's go back to 42, because that was our best sort of place. I'm just going to keep it on and it's dodgy going on. We've got these um, a lot around here, isn't it? Yeah, 42. Now look, we're still at 13.2 dBFS, but we're at 0.091. So we're in the respectable area, you know, point, point 0.1. And below is yeah, good, it's uh, respectable. If we turn that up a little bit, point 0.1, we can go a little bit louder before we start getting into the 1%. Ooh, straight into 5%, let's bring that down. 1% THD. Uh, 0.2 and we're up 52 on the input and uh, nearly 50 C on the temperature so that the the person who suggests 0.4 then uh, 1.4 amps quiescent uh, yeah not far off let's just give it that uh, give it that 1.4 now this heat sink that I'm using is going to be very warm all right, so there we go, about 1.4. I mean, we can see like 48.7, and that's not even sure how well the uh, tip of my probe, the temperature probe, is actually touching that. It might be just balanced in the middle of it somewhere, so <laughs> it's going to be warm. And all the way through this, look, 0 0.06, I'm at 14.5. That's a good listening volume. We're at a 38 here. That's a nice listening volume. Uh, we, we're doing slightly better there. On our 13.2 minus 13.2 dBFS, uh, 0 0.08 now instead of 0 0.9. Uh, let's see if we can get any better than uh, 0 0.5. We're about 9. When we after this 9, we started shooting up. Let's see what we get. Yeah, because it, you know, it's quite hard to get out 1%. So, so there. I mean, that's going to be pretty loud for it anyway. I've added some extra little spares around the base of this. But anything lower, like there, I mean, look at this, look, look at the harmonics just just dropping off here nicely. It'd be nice if they weren't there, but they're there and it's just dropping off and it is all from this. All right, uh, that's that, I think, for now. I think we've just covered having a look at that. If I leave this here and go for a frequency response, hit that and see what we get. All right, let's see if I can move this. I sometimes I have a problem being able to move this around like I have now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn that up a little bit more and hit it again. It should, there we go. And let's see if it lets me move it now. Yes, because what we wanna be able to do is just go in for the, um, oh, what am I doing? Come here, come on, come on. I want to be able to drop this down, so that's too much. We want to get it, so we've got, let's just drop that down to 10. Bring that back again, oh, wait, that's it. That's 20, let's drop this down. So 25, 10, bring that back. So we're just trying to get it as close as I can. We want it on the 3DB if we can have it like that. Um, so we've got the 3db side, roughly. I'd have to turn that up again. Right, so let's have a look. I'm going to try and make this as fair as possible for it. Minus 3, 12, 10, 11, 10, 9. Da, da, da. And we're going to... So we got, let's say this is just eight, and then we've got seven and six, there's three dB there, and eight, nine, and 10, or seven to eight to nine to 10 would be three dB. So a couple of dB each side to here, that would be that one, the eight, nine, 10, 11, and uh, yeah, to the five, so there's three dB there, that's good enough. So we can get to see then if we bring this in, we just put that, oh, come here, thumb work like that, and we'll go like that. So we get to see here that we are dropping off about one and a half dB on our 20, 
put a 30 uh, kilohertz. We've dropped off what's this here. Let's just put it to there. We'll have a little read minus 758. And at 30 hertz, we've got minus 816. So 758, 816. It's not a whole dB. Um, it's, it's not a whole dB. And at 40, uh, 7561 or something. Yeah, 5856. Uh, it's, it's, it's better. Uh, about half a dB drop off there, and that's at 40 hertz. And hey, how many of you got speakers that go any lower than that? Or even a 30? So that's not going to sound too bad. And if you change that input capacitor, um, you may find the, the bigger input capacitor, you might just get a little bit better on the old and a better quality. Um, I mean, it says Weimar on there, and don't know, but I'm sure um, looking through the forums, I saw other people have been trying different types of capacitors, oil and paper and stuff, and they were saying they're getting uh, and even uh, tantalum, um, metallized tantalum resistors, and they're saying they get a better sound response, tighter base, uh, an extended base on using those different things. So, but you can see that's not terribly bad at all. Not terribly bad at all. So, yeah, in conclusion, for the Class A, I mean, it's running a bit warm, um, and it does run better when it's running at a higher quiescent current. We can see that. Oh, let's just turn that off again. I was expecting to go there. If I kick that straight in there. Um, that point, yeah, one point, point one percent-ish. 11.2, I'd say that's pretty reasonable anyway. As a listening volume, because you, you're not going to be running these full blast. These are going to be for like just a comfortable listening volume. Nothing too loud and raucous. And uh, I think you're going to get a nice, pretty much a nice sort of linear response out of these. And this is what makes this sort of thing better than like the FETs, for instance, from what I've read. The linear response. Okay, all right, that's it. I just wanted to show you that and um, quick little how you set it up and what you should expect from temperature and such. A bit of a longer video than normal, but if you got this far, thanks a lot for, for watching and I will catch you in the next one, guys. Bye for now.